Okay, so this is a study on the word hell, the English word hell. That is nowhere found in scripture. Um, properly translated from the Greek and the Hebrew, you're going to get the words Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus. Now I did an extensive study here, and there's a ton of scripture. So it might be several parts, but I'm going to prove that hell and eternal torment is false teaching and doctrines of demons that are put out there and spewed out by Christianity and religion to fear tactics. And of course, we know what um, religion is. It's fear teaching. Diasa demonia is actually the Greek word, and it means dread demonism, dread demon, or dread teach, demon teach. So this word hell is used by religion to scare um, humanity into some kind of correct behavior, which really doesn't do anything. Um, I realize the absolute, which is the contrast, and God has it all in play as he scripted it. But uh, this fear teaching needs to be done away with, and this is why I'm here presenting that English word hell and eternal torment to be false. And I'm doing it through scripture. And I'm actually going to put up a presentation. This is going to take several, several presentations and videos, but it's worth it. It's worth it to give it out there and so people understand that they have no fear. Have no fear of God. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a loving God. He is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. And he will draw back his humanity and all of creation through Christ. Um, the lies of the wicked one, which is Satan, it, are not going to prevail. And uh, all will be drawn back through Christ. So this, is a, this should be a reassuring teaching that um, from the scriptures, you can see that hell and eternal torment is not real. It's fake. Okay, so we're going to start off with the unseen, which is Sheol and Hades. Sheol in the Hebrew, Hades in the Greek. Job 17, 16. Shall they descend by my side to the unseen, or will our rest be together in the soil? Matthew eleven twenty three. 23. And you, Capernaum, not to heaven shall you be exalted, to the unseen shall you subside. For if the powerful deeds which are occurring in you had occurred in Sodom, it might remain unto today. Matthew sixteen eighteen. Now I also am saying to you that you are Peter, and on this rock will I be building my ecclesia. And the gates of the unseen shall not be prevailing against it. Luke ten fifteen. And you, Capernaum, not to heaven shall you be exalted. To the unseen shall you subside. Luke 16, 23, And in the unseen, lifting up his eyes, existing in torments, he is seeing Abraham from afar, and Lazarus, Lazarus in his bosom. So that there is a parable. If you understand metaphors and parables in the scripture, then you'll understand that this is just basically telling you something through a parable or through a metaphor. So it's a teaching through that avenue, and Jesus did this with parables. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verses 27 through 31. For thou wilt not be forsaking my soul in the unseen, nor wilt thou be giving thy benign one to be acquainted with decay. Thou makest known to me the paths of life. Thou wilt be filling me with gladness with thy face. Men, Brethren, allow me to say to you with boldness concerning the patriarch David, that he deceases Allah also, he deceases also, and was entombed, and his tomb is among us until this day. He is dead, 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 dead. Just like Christ was dead for three days, David is dead. His tomb exists, but he is dead. He does not exist until the resurrection. Being then inherently a prophet, and having perceived that God swears to him with an oath, out of the fruit of his loins, to seat one on his throne, and that is King David, perceiving this before he speaks concerning the resurrection of the Christ. 
that he was neither forsaken in the unseen, nor was his flesh acquainted with decay. 1 Corinthians 15.55 Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Unveiling chapter 1, verse 18. And the living one, and I became dead. And lo, living am I, for the eons of the eons, amen. And I have the keys of death and of the unseen. This is Christ our Lord. He has the keys to the death, to death and the unseen right now. He's the only one that has, has immortality. Okay. Unveiling 6, 8. And I perceived, and lo, a greenish horse. And the name of him who was sitting upon it is death. And the unseen followed him. And jurisdiction was given them over the fourth of the earth to kill with the blade and with famine and with death and by the wild beasts of the earth. Unveiling 20, 13 through 14. And the sea gives up the dead in it, and death and the unseen give up the dead in them. And they were condemned, each in accord with their acts, and death and the unseen were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire.